You're welcome to Step Up Nigeria's podcast, our podcast is an initiative built to create awareness of governance issues that highlight the cost of corruption and its impact on service delivery. Our podcast also seeks to build a society of people with integrity and to provide solutions to service delivery challenges faced by everyday Nigerians. Our podcast topic today is Films for Social Change. How filmmakers and media personalities are helping to change attitudes and behaviors in Nigeria through social impact films and content. On this podcast today, the third part in this series, we are joined by guests from Moving Image Communications. Um, and I would like our guests to please introduce themselves. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Abdul Karim Mohammed. I'm the managing director of Moving Image Limited. And with me, he will introduce himself. Yeah, my name is Nasir B. Muhammad. I'm the general manager of Moving Image Limited. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Muhammad and Mr. Muhammad. Thank you so much for joining us for this podcast. Um, we're very excited to hear about the work that you're doing around in indigenous languages, but we'll get to that. Um, so let me start maybe with um, our MD. Um, what, what, what is the vision behind Moving Images and what have been some of your top projects since you started? Well, Moby Image has been uh, established about uh, 32 years ago. And uh, from that time, we have serviced uh, uh, state governments uh, across Nigeria. And we have serviced some international agencies and some federal agencies, including the Central Bank of Nigeria and uh, the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, as well as uh, Federal Ministry of Water Resources. All of these uh, federal agencies, we have uh, done extensive work with them in terms of documentation using video and radio. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, so as, as someone who has um, over the years been able to provide media support and expertise, um, what, what led you to move into the area of accountability, social impact, um, and to discuss the issues around the ills in society? What was the motivation to move into that space? Uh, MacArthur Foundation is the greatest motivation uh, because they, they, provide us, they provided us with an opportunity to not only create a radio drama series uh, campaign, but also to renew it after three uh, performance that I believe was adjudged to be successful. And uh, we are currently uh, on, in the fourth year and uh, is being renewed for three more years. So it's uh, the greatest motivation came in from MacArthur Foundation, actually. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, so, Mr. Nasiru, can you please tell us a bit more around um, the radio programs that you host? I know you have online programs as well. OK, um, the radio program uh, titled Sugar Banchi, which means leadership, um, is an infotainment, edutainment drama. That is a drama that, you know, uh, we use entertainment with education. And uh, we target grassroots. And uh, the characters and role models we created in the drama are those that the, our target audience can relate with. Um, the, it's in Hausa language. And so far, the reach we can say it's really good. How many states get access to view or to listen to this program? Yeah, officially it, from our contract with MacArthur Foundation based on the grant, uh, we have eight states, Sokoto, Kasuna, Kano, Kaduna, Bauchi, and Abuja, then Niger State, yes. Okay, I want to ask, what, what inspired your passion for creating this kind of content in indigenous languages? You know, why did you decide we have to do it in a language that people there can understand. Uh, can I uh, rewind yes, us a little bit, uh, you know, to yes, the drama series because uh, some yes. of the interjections he has made, I think uh, we need to elaborate a little bit more on the radio drama, the Shukabanchi. Uh, it is a, an infotainment, as you have said, edutainment that uh, is very encapsulating because the target audience has been uh, specifically targeted at the grassroots persons. That's why the use of household language. But in order to get hold of the interest of the grassroots person, what we have done is we domicile the story in a sort of 
real life situation. If we are broadcasting during rainy season, that is the, wow. how the story is going to be told. If it is during dry season, that is how the story is going to be told. And if it is during festivities like uh, Christmas, like Salah, you know, that's how the story is going to be told. And I believe by introducing that singular act, what we have succeeded in doing is to imbibe in the people the feeling that what we are doing is as close to reality as possible. Because they, they, they just cannot conceive how a drama series will be talking as per current situation being broadcast. Mm -hmm. So that has really elevated the listenership for the program. And uh, secondly, because it's character driven, the carefully selected characters that we have used have been able to caught the attention of the uh, listeners. And that is why uh, some of them that we started off with, for example, one of our lead characters, she is uh, a lady in No, for example, she has gained acceptance. When we picked her up, she had no experience of acting at all. Oh. But, but one of the things that we have successfully done is we have created a star out of her. She has been now uh, been identified by listeners to even call upon the station that is running our program in Niger State, for example, to invite her for a seller event, and they were charging fees to see her. So these are some of the things that uh, makes us feel that, yes, our concept has really resonated with the people. Before I go to the next question, because some of the things you said are very interesting, um, can you give our listeners a sense of what these episodes are like? Maybe just a two-minute brief of the kind of things that are in the content. Because you said it's a drama, so I want to just get a picture. Is it multiple actors, voicing? Just give us an idea, yes. Yeah, what we do is we have three components of the drama. One of the components deal with the messaging, the anti-corruption messaging, and there are characters built around that story. We have the comedy component, and there are characters built around uh, the comedy storyline. And there is also an emotional storyline, which is based on love, which is like more of the universal language. And there are characters built around that. So what we do is we carry the audience along. And while some of the characters interact, we allow others to like who want to follow emotional stories like we have them on board who wants to follow like the comedy stories we also have them on board we ridicule people with undesired behaviors mm -hmm. so and i will believe that also goes a long way in showing the audience how ridiculous you can be by adapting such undesired behaviors and we have the messaging which is very very subtle and you know and very gradual we don't like put it so much on the face and the it's as well built around person's story real life not just someone that just like preaches to the audience to the listeners because we don't want to make it sound didactic and um another thing is you know uh people go their personal lives and we reflect, just like the MD has said, we reflect through to life situations that people can really relate with. And that's why like, we receive a lot of calls. Like um, there's one uh, district head who called an actor in the drama and said he believes like we plan people in such uh, royal establishments to get to know what they are doing so that we can use them drama. He said, well, it's a work of fiction. That is an example of how the stories really resonate with uh, people. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Mohammed, did you want to say something? Well, uh, in order to reiterate the issue of resonating with the audience, I believe uh, the emergence of uh, Sugar Banshee Radio Drama Series uh, Listeners Association across the oh. states it's a fantastic uh, pointer because we didn't initiate it. It is the listeners that initiated the, the, the concept from Sokoto. And uh, they only invited us 
very lately to say they have taken a step towards uh, identifying uncorruptible persons around their state and they were honoring them based on the storyline of the radio drama. And uh, we were able to go there just to witness what was happening. And that is what made us to now sell the concept, to now say that uh, such uh, drama listeners associations should be uh, established across the listening areas. And that is what we are trying to consolidate on currently. I have to pause and clap. That's fantastic work, sir. I, I don't, I don't understand how, sir. If not, it's something I would have tuned into. I, if I, when I get back to Abuja, just to listen. It does sound very interesting. And for people in the rural communities who listen to the radio all the time, I can imagine, you know, people gathering around, waiting for the time slot. You know, gathering, listening, discussing the issues. So it's really fantastic work, and they're already seeing these kind of impact stories of people even identifying that. You know, this person's behavior displayed is like what is described in the radio show, and this is how we shouldn't act. I think um, it's really an impactful initiative towards changing behaviors. Again, kudos to your team, sir. Um, you. So I would also like to ask, even though it may be obvious to some listeners because of the locations that your show airs, but why did you choose, you know, an ind indigenous show? You could have chosen English, you could have chosen Pigeon, you know, why did you choose to use an indigenous language of the people? And what have been some of the fruits you've seen of using their language rather than using maybe English or something else? In the first instance, the ignorance of majority is that uh, things should start from the top. So since concentration has been given to that uh, top uh, echelon of our society, we feel that the grassroots should not be left behind. And the more we incorporate them into fighting corruption, the better it will be, so that at least the messaging will trickle down and everybody will feel a part uh, of the solution rather than disengaging the majority, leaving everything in the hands of the minority. And uh, that is the primary focus of uh, our initiative. Then secondly, we are feeling that, that uh, radio has proved to be a very uh, wonderful medium, especially in houses speaking areas. You know, there is a culture of listening to radio. So we feel that uh, we should ride on that uh, to ensure that the uh, listenership that is on offer is utilized to, to, to be conscripted to fight corruption in the country. And uh, that, these are the major, major motivations. I don't know whether Nasir can remember some more. Yeah, additionally, you know, when you are talking to people and you are calling them to action, they need to clearly understand what you are saying. So that clarity matters a lot. And, you know, the clarity cannot be, I mean, the clarity we get in Hausa cannot be gotten in English, considering our, our target audience. Thank you. That's a key point. You have to communicate in the language your audience will understand. I think that's a key learning for people who are listening to this podcast today. Um, so I wanted to skip, sir, because I found out, some, I mean, it's something I saw on your profile as well today about the Kano Indigenous Languages of Africa Film Market Festival. Um, we would like to hear more about that, the kind of content that you, you share at the festival, what kind of films, and how that has helped to improve citizens' awareness. Well, the festival is uh, going into its fifth edition for five years now. And uh, what actually prompted uh, that uh, initiative dates back to 1982, when I was doing my attachment in KCO Channel 13 in Los Angeles. I was serving under an executive producer who was Marilyn Solomon, and she uh, was uh, my boss then. She had this friend that was serving in California Senate for 16 years at that time. And uh, she got invited into Nigeria for the first time. She had not left uh, America. That was the first time she was leaving America for somewhere else, and it happened to be Nigeria. So she was overwhelmed that she said to me, she had never thought in her wildest dream that there was this part of the world where she could come. From the airport when she landed up to the time she was taken back to that same airport to exit the country, every important person she met was black. She said she never thought there was a place like that. And uh, she completely realized that there is a gap, cultural gap, that the average black American is suffering from. And here she comes into a society of blacks that do not have that uh, hangover hanging around them. Therefore, she, she was really impressed by that. And uh, I was introduced to her 
to uh, by the my executive producer, and uh, she conscripted me into her election campaign as at that time. And uh, what she was making me to talk about, and this was the cream of the crop of Los Angeles. Every black person that was important, I could literally say I met, and including the mayor of Los Angeles, Tom Bradley. She took me to his office, and uh, what I realized was that all through that experience for me, I was truly appreciating who I was. Because here were guys that were more important than me, were more uh, matured, more uh, affluent in terms of uh, money, but there is this uh, a sort of difference between me and them. I could see through them that they lost out from their cultural heritage information. And here I was not, not losing out on that. And I was more confident. I, was, I could see that uh, I was not being intimidated by what they had in terms of uh, favors over me. But uh, they were looking up to me as somebody that had something they don't have. And that was when it clicked on me, then bingo. I said, well, since we are here, and we are still in touch with our cultural realities, we should never lose sight of it. And that is why I said, let us introduce an indigenous language film festival so that we can be able to reiterate such messaging to our young ones that are coming up so that we can be able to appreciate who we truly are and identify those people that are instrumental in propagating what I'm talking about to now honor or cherish their excellence so that we can uh, promote their professionalism by rewarding them with awards. And that is how we came into the concept of this indigenous language firms, because I think language is the main vehicle of culture. And if we now allow our languages to go extinct, because most of us that are educated, we feel that I need to make my case to speak in English rather than my indigenous language, and we are losing out. So I'm, I'm nursing this fear of us drifting towards the black American side. And I, that is the, the main thing about the festival. And uh, thank God, you know, despite uh, COVID-19, we were able to hold the sessions of Kill Up uh, virtually for the years that uh, COVID was a problem. And now we are combining both virtual and physical presence to now move on. Wow, thank you. Is Vassar anything to add before I go on? Uh, yeah, said it all. <laughs> Thank you, sir. No, sir. I mean, there's a wealth of wisdom in everything that you said. I honestly want to stop asking questions and just let you talk, um, because identity is such an important thing. I know I do have some of those friends in the U.S. who, you know, you know they are doing all this DNA and ancestry tests now, trying to find out what part of the world they are from. And I would agree with you. I think again, it's something I would. This is a personal opinion um, that the Houses are one of the very few people, few cultures in Nigeria that retain their language. My father is from Edo State. My mom is from Oshun. Um, I cannot speak my father's language because he never taught it to me. Uh, thankfully, my mom did speak Yoruba, so at least my Yoruba is like 40%. But I, and I married a man from Oyo State who does not speak Yoruba either. And I'm concerned every day for my children that they may never know any of our languages. And I said, they, I'm not going to give my children English names for this very reason that you want them to have roots that tie them back to where they are from. So I agree, sir, that it's very important that we promote and celebrate films that still speak to our culture and our language. And so again, kudos to your team for that initiative. And I would also like to ask what have been some of your successes, you know, from some of the films you've highlighted, people who have won awards in the past, if you can tell us a bit about that. Well, in terms of uh, awards, we have not gone into competitions that much, but uh... There is a film that uh, we produced uh, way back in 1998, and we entered it into the uh, National Film Festival. It won the Best uh, Sound Award. Why? Because we made use of dual sound system recording. Then it was only using the, the, the microphone on the camera. But we now use Niagara, which was then the technology of audio, to record both on Niagara and uh, the video camera system, and we merged them at production to improve the quality of the audio, and it won uh, an award. And then in 2003, our film, where we here, it was producing Hausa also. It uh, won the most culturally inclined film 
uh, at the Arewa Film Festival, and uh, that is another award that we have. But I think most importantly, the successes of our product programming, like we have done campaign, it, it has to do with health issues, and uh, we were very, very happy with the result of how it changed the campaign theme uh, with the audience that we produced. That is only 13 episode of uh, Radio Drama Series, but uh, the impact was so successfully recorded that we were happy with. And even the MacArthur Foundation project that we are handling now, I believe is based on the performance that uh, they renewed the edition for another three more years, which I think uh, is, a, is a statement on itself. So it's not an award, but at least it, to give you a nod on continuing something, it, it shows that it has uh, tremendously succeeded. We packaged the Green Revolution uh, of federal government under the Central Bank of Nigeria. We packaged it into a, both radio and television program, and it was aired across uh, 10 uh, radio stations, uh, five television stations across the country. And the, the favorable response also of that campaign was very heartwarming. It was not an award, but at least it's a feedback that says, yes, we have done a marvelous job there. So these are some of the things that we have done that we are proud of. And uh, we feel that uh, it has elevated our spirit to continue what we are doing. I, I remember the health uh, radio, um, it was on severe IP malnutrition. Yeah, and it was 13 episodes titled Renandang Adam. And uh, the audience, the actors, the crew all wanted the the drama to continue. They all wished it had gone more than yeah, 13 Fs, you know, because of uh, the nature of the story, the success is recorded. But unfortunately, the funders only budgeted for 13 Fs. Thank you. I'm almost tempted to ask you to do a, an English transcription for those of us who are interested in watching, um, but we'll see about that. I do hope to attend the festival this year. It would be interesting to see. I would hope to be there. And I, I don't know if you're aware that we do have this cartoon film that we show children in schools. It's called Halima's Boat. Step Up Nigeria has um, a cartoon film. It's also well, it's, the, the character is also Hausa, so there are a lot of Hausa songs. She speaks Hausa in the film as well. So that's that's something else that I think we've experienced, at least because we go to IDP camps in FCT and in Nasarawa State. And so we've actually played it. It has a lot of songs around that. And I, I, I can agree 100% that the Hausa speaking people enjoy the cartoon film better because they actually understand the language that they spoke there. But it's something I can share with you after this, um, just so that you can also see that we're that working on something as well. Thank you. That would be nice. Okay. That would be nice. Uh, I also wanted to ask, um, apart from um, Shugabanchi and um, the film festival, are there any other initiatives to promote integrity that you work on so that I don't miss out on anything? Those are the two that I'm aware of. Yeah, uh, he, he can be able to explain that. And uh, there is a video component to this thing that we have introduced. And, uh, it's also making it, waves. <laughs> yeah, um, it's titled Rumfarim uh, Shai, like tea sellers spot. You know, uh, we deliberately uh, used that as, you know, it's, it's, how do I say, it's like a melting pot. Different people get there and to give women presence, we establish a crassella just by the side. Uh, for the presentations and uh, the story happens within that premise. And what we do is, whatever issue is raised in the radio drama, then there's like casual discussion of such issue uh, at that Meshai uh, spot. That's how we treat the this thing, and it is on YouTube. So for anybody that Google's uh, moving image slash Shai on YouTube. Can be able to access the, the video uh, clips. Okay, okay. So our listeners, please visit that. As he said, please check out Moving Images on YouTube to find out that content. Um, and from what you said, I know you've given me one or two, but I do want you to speak a bit more about some of the stories you've gotten from your listeners, both of the radio show, 
um, of the video shows, some of the testimonies that they've given from how, you know, what they learned from these shows have changed their own attitudes and behaviors. Any more stories that you can share, we'd be glad to hear. I think one of the main ones for me is uh, during the 2019 general elections in Kano State, there was what they declared inconclusive election. And uh, three more weeks were given for the, con the conclusion of the inconclusive. And it so happened that we have aired a, a program talking about not selling your votes. Rather, I use your vote to bargain for something that will benefit your community. And that message resonated with a word in Kano. They call it Gamma Ward, G-A-M-A -A Ward. Now, Gamma Ward was so critical to that inconclusive election because it is the largest ward with the highest votes. So the voters of that ward used their cards to now remind a sitting governor that, look, you made a promise during the first tenure that you are going to do this road for us. You have finished. You are now seeking for a second tenure. We will not vote for you in the next coming election in three weeks unless you do that road for us. And you, you believe it, that road was done. And they casted the vote, and it was their vote that they gave him the second term. I think it's the biggest of all this thing for me. Then, of course, uh, my, uh, can I say, uh, marginally, there were some discussions about women that have taken into the characters that we are depicting in the story. One of the characters is married to a very corrupt person, and he is a, a leader, a sort of uh, uh, village head leader level, and she was correcting him whatever he does in, the, in terms of going waywards corruptively. And uh, many people have reported to have said that, that she is a character they identified with in terms of the role she is playing to change her husband. And there is another woman who is very powerful in the house. She telegrams what happens in the house. And unfortunately for her, she doesn't know how to cook. And <laughs> that made them to now say, OK, this opera right lady knows how to cook very well. And that is why she is able to now influence whatever her husband does. Because there is this Af African adage that says, the best way to a man's heart is through his stomach. So that has resonated very well to now make many women to now say, I'm going to perfect my cooking so that I can be able to, to influence my husband. And for those that are not good at cooking, say, OK, I don't need to be a nagging wife. I need to be a person that can cook so that I can do. So I, I, I think marginally, these were feedbacks that I think were quite heartwarming to, to hear uh, in, in terms of the impact and uh, what they have to. But the idea of this. Uh, Shugabanchi Drama Listeners Association is unbeatable because they have taken ownership to now introduce how they can be able to monitor projects around their areas, identify those that are performing well, and even award them with uh, meritorious uh, awards that will say we're happy with what you're doing and we're encouraging you to do more. So I think these are some of the issues. Yeah. And additionally, one of the characters um, who is currently the village head, through the drama, he learned how to hold leaders to account, which made him sue his member of House of Representatives for failure to complete a project. And I think that's a great success story because from what he learned in the drama, he was an actor, he was part of the drama. But he also learned something, mobilized people in his constituency and made them take action against the member of the House of Representatives. And I think that's also a very uh, great success story. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm sure if I ask, there are definitely more. I'm very, it, it, it's heartwarming that truly, truly, you can say for a fact that the, the content that you're sharing is actually changing people's mindsets, their, their thinking, their attitudes and their behaviors. For someone to 
learn that they can actually sue someone for failure to to perform service delivery is it's a fantastic feat um and there's there's not more to say than well done to your team so it's fantastic work that you're doing and i hope that some more of our listeners will be interested in um you know amplifying the work that you're doing because it is really really good work um so i'm going to a bit the most difficult part of the questions now but this is just to help some of our listeners in terms of learning it couldn't have been easy all along the way so i mean the next set of questions are for maybe young you know content makers filmmakers who are listening to this and they want to replicate some of the things that you have done you know maybe someone who wants to replicate the work that you have done in in the southwest or in the south south something that will have this level of impact um what would you say has been a significant challenge you know that you faced and how were you able to overcome it the challenge the most uh, difficult one is really getting the story right mm. because it is the story that makes the production and once you falter at that level of preparation then there will be no impact so i believe uh, we have been really blessed by people that can sit down through script workshops to now crystallize the idea into making it a script that is everybody's delight once you once you give it to the actors you know they are more than happy to to act it because uh, it, it resonates even with them as a start of point and you can see that once the script resonates with the person that is acting uh, it goes a long way and what we have introduced in the drama recording is we are not recording our drama in the studio we are we we take it live out on location as if we are producing a video or film so we 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 go to a drama village and if it is in a room that we are recording a scene we go into the room if it is a market we go into a market situation if it is a hospital we go into hospital situation or office situations so uh, that has really really helped to one make people feel that there is a sense of reality in the way we are telling the story and secondly people relating very well with the environment where we are situating the story now once we are able to get these two elements uh, right i think uh, we surmounted the largest of all uh, problems or challenges starting from the script and then the welfare situation that we created because uh, we have studied what is been happening around in location sites and uh, to now see what are the uh, shortfalls that uh, usually the motivate actors and we 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 we, we captured those things early enough to now say okay let's self guide ourselves from getting them into that mood and uh, because uh, we have been able to be proactive in that sense and that is why our lo uh, local monitoring and evaluation has really helped us because we we have induced it in such a way that in every inch of our action we are looking at what has happened and where have we gone wrong so that we can be able to pick up our challenges and improve on them once we are working in the field next time around uh, uh, yeah I, i think that you have said it all because the truth is um we like maybe because of the experiences we got on board the project we were able to like foresee potential challenges and mitigate you know uh towards that and so so far so good we can see but the advice would be you know to really be uh, like to be censoring what they do like um there shouldn't be offensive words offensive actions uh, you know in any way uh, derogate any tribe any social class and uh, what have you so i think uh, that will really go a long way in making the, their projects successful thank you thank you very much 
Um, everything you said is key in terms of like the framing and the phrasing and the content and then script writing and getting it right. But what's a lesson that you learned, you know, maybe something that happened across the way and you learned the lesson that you can also share. Um, and I, I don't know if it's something where, you know, you'd be willing to do some kind of workshop that allows other people who are excited about your work to come and learn. But that's a different conversation. Anyway, what lesson do you think that you've learned in executing this initiative that you can share? But yeah, if, if I can start with, uh, you know, to when you are dealing with creative people, never detect them. Allow their creative juice to flow. That will really have it. it's an important lesson. Because I've been to sessions where, for example, writers will be told what to do, and the result is not always as fine as if you allow them to, you know, come up with their creative ideas. All you need to do is like shape it to suit the purpose, but allow them to exhibit their creativity. And I think one other major uh, component is there has to be discipline that prevails in all through the process. Because uh, I can tell you without any fear of contradiction that one of the major things that makes uh, Sugar Banshee and uh, Rampar Meshai Tik is the level of discipline that we demand from whoever is on board. And uh, we do not tolerate anybody to waver off what we have set as a target. And uh, that has really helped a lot because once rules are broken and they are scot free for anybody to do so at any time, then uh, it will hamper the progress of the, the whole setting. And that is, I think, an area that we, we have strongly uh, advocated and complied with uh, almost 100%. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, discipline and consistency is key. Um, so to round up, my last question, I feel like it's answered without even asking is, uh, do you believe that storytelling through radio, through films, has the power to change attitudes and behaviors of people in society. But I think our answer would be a resounding yes from all the examples that you've given throughout this session. Um, so the only thing I will ask now is what can our listeners expect from Moving Images next? What should we look forward to? And if you can also share your social media handles, um, the stations where they can listen to your show online so that listeners can follow up with the work that you do. Well, what uh, I believe uh, people should expect from Moving Image Limited is to uh, be expecting quality at all times, because uh, really that is our guiding principle. And also value for money, because so whoever we are engaging with, we absolutely demand value for money. And if you fall off way by the side, we will not think one bit will give you by the side where you belong. And uh, that has really been great for us. And I think we have been identified with that. So consistency will be consistent, will not change because you don't change your winning team. And uh, we have worked this year with so many people that uh, we, we, we have been together, but the very few that uh, faltered, we, we waved them off and uh, we are moving on. So we will be consistent in that respect because uh, we believe that uh, value for money is key to whatever service delivery one is engaged in, and uh, we want to give that value for money at all times. And for the social media handles, um, on Facebook, we have uh, Facebook slash Shugabanti Radio Drama, and for Instagram, is Moving Image LTD. That's at Moving Image LTD. And on YouTube, it's Moving Image Limited. That's our YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Okay. You can also follow Step Up Nigeria for our listeners on Twitter and Instagram at step underscore up underscore Nigeria. And on LinkedIn and Facebook at Step Up Nigeria. We're also on YouTube. You can follow us at Step Up TV and our website is stepupnigeria.org. Uh, we hope our listeners enjoyed this conversation. A big thank you again to the team at Moving Image Limited, to Mr. Nasser Mohammed and Mr. Bukari Mohammed. Thank you so much for making up this time and for this very insightful conversation. Kudos to your team and well done for all the work that you're doing. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much.